Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 multiplayer. Today we're back with a match myself taking the Vampire Coast up against a High Elf opponent. So let's get straight to it. Uh, this is a build that was similar to the one I used in a recent tournament. Unfortunately, the VOD of the tournament is not available uh, because of a technical issue. It was casted by Turn and Italian, and I had a pretty good series. I was eliminated in the first round, but. Uh, went 3-1, and one, uh, had one good victory with a similar build to this, and uh, yeah, basically it was against the Tomb Kings, and the only difference was this Rotting Leviathan was changed out for the Regiment of Renowned Necrosphinx, but for the rest of the build we've got Gunnery Mobs, uh, second line of Pole Arms, Lampery's Revenge, and another unit of uh, Promethean Gunnery Mobs. We've got uh, Silostra here, and a Fleet Captain, Lord of Vampires, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Straightforward crab rush. For my opponent's high elf build, he's got a princess up on a dragon, a light mage on foot, lots of Lothurn Sea Guard and archers mixed, some white lions, a single group of phoenix guard, plenty of spearmen. A pretty decent high elf build, honestly. Going wide with the high elves and just bringing tons of infantry is a pretty decent way to go against the uh, vampire coast. You can see the pistols are going to start to unload here. They're not going to do much damage, but they're mostly just here to uh, distract and soak hits. Meanwhile, the crabs come forward and start to get the rush going. You can see the uh, zombies on the back popping off some shots as well. It's going to be really brutal stuff. The idea here is we keep all these crabs in one pocket. You can see my opponent unleashed a banishment here. Uh, that is going to get into these zombies and do really, really good damage. You can see just absolutely ripping apart those deckhand mobs, doing a ton of leadership damage as well. But... Since Silostra has good summon ability, we're going to go ahead and summon some Knights Errant in the back line. A decent uh, Shem's Burning Gaze there from that Light Mage will do some good damage over time. But uh, you can see here these Rotting Prometheans, all things considered, taking quite a bit of damage from those Phoenix Guard. The Phoenix Guard are a bit ranked up, so they have just absolutely amazing combat stats. And you can see the Invocation of Nehek nerf here. And unfortunately, that did not catch either of the single entity models, only healing the Rotting Prometheans. I actually had casted it specifically on these Rotting Prometheans here because they were low on HP, but here come the damn Knights Errant rear charging. These uh, Elf Spearmen here hopefully going to proc a bit of a terror, terror route. Silostra also dropping her debuffs, of course. She has that speed and melee attack debuff, the Song of Enthrallment, very strong as the Princess drops down, tries to do a bit of damage. She's able to get a few good hits on Silostra here, but it's definitely turning into a bit of a grind fight. You can see some high elves routing off, but a lot of the zombies starting to take some serious damage. We have used up one Promethean Summon to get into the back line here. Did some really good damage to these archers and shut them down temporarily as well. You can see in the center, a lot of these spearmen starting to get terrified away also. The Phoenix Guard have gotten some good damage. They've managed to get a second uh, silver XP chevron. And uh, yeah, just getting a ton of damage, especially on this Rotting Leviathan here. You can see he's uh, about half HP. Another Invocation to Heck cast, this time specifically on said Leviathan. The Princess is getting some good hits in, but she's also taking damage now, especially with the two Leviathans, you know, one on each side. With, of course, Silostra singing her songs up top. It's going to be a rough situation for the uh, princess here, but since the summon in the back line wore off, the summon nerf, again, showing showing through there with both the Damn Knights Errant and the uh, Rotting Prometheans having both run out of time. The arrows are going to be free to fire. That being said, the princess is still taking a ton of damage. Balance of power, honestly, still pretty even, though, as there are a lot of elven infantry left, a lot of white lions and spearmen. And a lot of these expensive units for the coast here are not doing great. You can see a lot of damage on the Rotting Leviathan here. Just continuing to, to pile up, despite the fact a lot of these units don't have the greatest AP values. You know, death by a thousand cuts is definitely still a thing, and all units do have a degree of AP. High Elf Bowmen actually have pretty decent AP. I want to say it's like 4 AP per shot. Let's have a look here. These uh, archers here, if we have a look at their missile damage as they fire in here, 3 AP per shot. Okay, so not too bad. But uh, yeah, the non-AP missiles will do negligible damage. Oh man, and that, uh, that poor Phoenix Guard meeting a rather grisly fate there, being eaten by the giant crabs. But slowly this is going to start to grind in the favor of the... Uh, Vampire Coast here, you can see slowly over time these high elves just getting worn down, and as these various units start to run out of ammunition and 
don't have any other way of protecting themselves, it's going to be tough, especially the fact that this princess is so low on HP, and since the High Elf brought Lore of Light, oh man, another uh, chow down here. Oof, that High Elf Archer, yeah, as I was saying, that because there's Lore of Light, there's no healing for the dragon or any of these other units like those very expensive Phoenix guards, so... Well, I do uh, understand the pick of Lore of Light here with the Nets and the Mass Archers. I really think you're better off to go with healing almost always as the High Elves, just because they tend to have low model count units, units that are very expensive. Uh, those Phoenix Guard could have benefited greatly from a regrowth, especially when they started to take a lot of damage in that initial phase. Could have sustained a bit longer and maybe finished off some of these uh, high-value, you know, monsters. You can see... The zombies have pretty much been dealt with, but uh, the Crab Death Star is still rolling, and despite the fact the Rotting Leviathan is very low on HP, the uh, these gunnery mobs here, the non-regiments of Renown, getting pretty close to their healing cap. The Regiment of Renown, of course, with their extra regen, have taken less damage. Well, probably taken about equivalent damage, but they've been able to regenerate quite a bit of it back. And, uh, oh man, just doing a little bit of a drive-by here on these crabs, no big deal. Not really engaging those spearmen is in melee as we're going after these more high-value white lions here. But of course, the uh, gunnery mobs on the back with their shotties. Going to pop a few shots into those spearmen as they drive by. And it's actually enough to shatter them, interestingly enough. That is one thing about uh, the Vampire Coast. Oh, these high-end crab units, at least, have those guys on the back. You know, both uh, the shotguns on the gunnery mob Prometheans here. And of course, the Rotting Leviathans also have their own gun crews. With the exception being Silostra, of course. She doesn't have any filthy zombies on hers. At least I don't think. It's kind of hard to see at the moment, but... Yeah. You can see the balance of power has tipped pretty decisively at this point. And it's just a matter of time before the High Elves get finished off here. I mean, granted, there's still quite a bit of ammunition on some of these uh, archers and so on. You can see the princess is going to come over. Potentially drop some, some shots here. Maybe a breath attack or two. But, uh, yeah, the High Elf Infantry at this point just doesn't have the leadership to hold out against this heavy, heavy crab rush. Ooh, man, yeah, Breath Attack comes in, does some really good damage to Silostra. You can see she gets pretty low, but just because of the damage that's been done to the High Elf Army, there's really not a lot left on the balance of power. Honestly, these Lampers Avenged by themselves could probably tank out just about everything that's left. You can see the uh, Light Mage getting caught up by the Crabs here and absolutely terrorized. While the Lothran Sea Guard, those that remain trying to uh, unleash their last few volleys here. You can see these guys have got their spears out already. They know what's coming. Preparing to meet their fate here as the Crabs slowly continue to <laughs> march their way forward. Unleashing yet more shots on the mage here. Oh man, beautiful sunset in the background. The lighting on this map is a little bit weird. Everything is a bit blue and sort of dark looking, but that sunset does look quite nice. Nothing like giant undead filthy crabs and a screaming banshee lady to uh, just set the mood right at the end of the day. <laughs> Oh man, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. You can see the High Elves trying to uh, retreat here, but Lothar and Seagard are out of ammo, realizing that our time has come. They're going to, you know, grab their spears with two hands, charge in here. And, uh, yeah, to be expected, a breath attack comes in. Crabs just absolutely mowing through these infantry, and that's going to be pretty much GG. Getting very close to critical army losses here. But, uh, yeah, we might actually lose that Rotting Leviathan. It's down to about 700 HP. Getting a little low, but yeah, it's not enough. You can see the High Elf Infantry very quickly gets terrified here. Those Lothran Sea Guards can't really hold up at this point. Uh, the Spearmen and everything. Just nobody's really, really wanting to stand and fight this massive Crab Death Star. And who can really blame them, honestly? It's, uh, you know, pretty terrifying, all things considered. Oh, man. So, yeah, unfortunately, I can't show you guys the tournament game I had. It was basically, imagine this. I think there might have been some differences in the infantry as well, but essentially it was this, but instead of the Rotting Leviathan, I had the, again, the Regiment of Renowned Necrosphinx because fire damage against the Tomb Kings, and uh, he basically burnt Kotep to a crisp. But in this battle, 
Getting back to what actually happened, you can see all the crab units racking up a ton of kills doing some heavy heavy lifting, 84 kills, 2 XP chevrons for the rotting leviathan, although it did take a ton of damage, uh, 113 kills for the lampier's revenge, 53 for the other uh, gunnery mob leviathan here, or sorry, promethean. 103 kills for Silostra, 55 for the uh, fleet captain there, of course she was providing those evocations, and uh, yeah, overall the zombies, you know, did get some kills, which is okay. On the high elf side, no questions asked, those white lions just absolutely cleaned up shop, 118 kills for those spearmen, only 55 kills on the phoenix guard, but they did do the lion's share of the damage. Uh, to like the Sprouting Leviathan, for example. Archers were able to do quite a bit of damage as well. Honestly, this is not a terrible build. The ju the the Dragon is a little bit of a questionable pick in my opinion. Granted, uh, it's, it's nice to have that, but just in general bringing monsters against the Vampire Coast can be pretty risky because of their overwhelming guns. Um, and if you were to cut the dragon, you could probably just afraid, afford to bring more stuff, like even more archers, maybe, uh, you know, potentially another unit of Phoenix Guard, you could maybe upgrade these white lions to another more powerful unit, potentially. <clears throat> Tough to say, but uh, definitely a fun battle, well played to my opponent, hope you guys enjoyed watching that one. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button, so every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.